Smartphones have a multitude of functions and over one million apps that can transform your handset into anything from a stethoscope to a spirit level. The smartphone is without doubt one of the most amazing feats of miniaturization since Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But how does a smartphone actually work? Well, let's start with the interface that we use the most often, the touch-sensitive screen. Now, touch-sensitive sounds quite delicate, doesn't it? But these things, they really are ridiculously tough. Many of our smartphone screens are made of this stuff, Gorilla Glass. It's light, thin and strong. It's chemically strengthened by a process called ion exchange, which, simply put, means that sodium ions in the glass are replaced by larger potassium ions under extreme heat. And because you then have bigger atoms in the same space, it causes the glass to compress and toughen. So how does a touchscreen actually work? Well, we've built this model in expanded layer format to try to help explain it. Basically, it acts as sort of an electrostatic field, thanks to two layers of conductors arranged in a grid system separated by a thin layer of glass. Now, this field needs something that conducts electricity to function, which is where we come in. Because we ourselves conduct electricity, when we touch an area of the screen, it changes the electrical charge at that point and triggers the desired reaction in the device. So what exactly is inside this miniature technological masterpiece? Well, a lot of it, as you might expect, is made up of circuit boards, which manage calls and data. But there are a few other standout items. Underneath this casing right here is the accelerometer, and it represented a huge innovation. When it was introduced in 2004, it was a big leap because it meant you could change the aspect of the screen just by its movement, and it helped with the development of all kinds of things, from fitness apps to more interactive gameplay. The accelerometer in your smartphone is essentially a microchip made from silicon. To explain the principle of how accelerometers work, imagine that their housing is attached to your phone and inside the housing is a mass attached to a spring which can move relative to your phone. So if you move your phone up, the ball lags behind and there's a stretch in the spring. The stretch can then be measured, you can use that to work out the acceleration and your phone can then use that information to orient itself. The smartphone's accelerometer also works alongside gyroscopes. So regardless of whether the phone is up or down, right or left, Forwards, backwards, pitch roll or yaw. Its exact position and orientation can be precisely charted. So the bottom line is that the accelerometer and gyro combined provide six orientation inputs for your smartphone's processors at any time, which means, amongst other things, better picture stabilisation for your smartphone's camera, more realistic motion control for its games, oh, and more accurate use of its navigation apps. <laughs> Can I get off now, guys? I'm feeling a little bit sick. Finally, it's easy to overlook the fact that the original purpose of the mobile phone, which is simply making a call, is still a brilliant technological achievement in its own right. So how does it do that, then? Much like what goes on here, 4G smartphone calls are all about delivering packets of information. But unlike these parcels, your smartphone message is shrunk and broken into smaller pieces before being reassembled prior to delivery. Firstly, your phone strips out any unwanted gaps or pauses from a call, then chops it up further into tiny data packets, containing a fragment of the message and an address of where to send it. Cleverly, these packets are then sent down a variety of different paths to ease data congestion. And this is called packet switching. Astonishingly, your phone then puts all these slivers of info back together in the right order when they arrive, and your connection is complete. So what next for the amazing smartphone? Well, the arrival of 4G not only means much faster connectivity at expected ever-reducing costs, but also better quality, reliability and coverage too. But there are already plans for LTEA or Advanced, which are going to need speeds four times faster still. We're going to need more antennae under these little cases, but I can't see it being too much of a problem.